an original MCM production. This is What's Going On, being brought to you by Mata Community Media. This show's producer is Martha Love. My name is John Anderson, and I'm the Senior Programs and Partnerships Coordinator for WRTP Big Step. And I'll be your guest for today's show, which is being brought to you by Mata Community Media and WRTP Big Step, which is located at 3841 West Wisconsin Avenue. WRTP Big Step is a workforce intermediary um, and today we're going to be speaking with some of the leadership staff from WRTP Big Step to learn more about the work they've been doing in our community uh, for many years to enhance the ability of the public and private partners to recruit, develop, and retain a diverse, qualified workforce, primarily in the areas of construction and manufacturing sectors, and also emerging sectors, and how their hard work is helping to build a pipeline of adult and youth workers who are prepared to succeed in meeting the industry's timely and often specific workforce needs. With us today, we have Mr. Mark Kesnich, who is the president and CEO. Mark is responsible for the overall operations of the organization and the continued development of innovations of public and private partnerships through an industry-led and worker-centered, community-focused approach. We also have Ms. Tracy Griffith, who is the Director of Construction Initiatives. De Tracy works with trade unions, contractors, and other public-private partners to develop various programs geared towards helping to meet the workforce needs in the construction industry. Uh, she oversees the uh, Big Step Apprenticeship Readiness Program as well. And also we have with us today, this is Ms. Randy Burr, our Director of Manufacturing Initiatives. Randy works with various industrial partners and other public and private partners to develop various programs that are geared towards helping to meet the workforce needs in the manufacturing sectors. And again, I'm John Anderson. I'm WRTP Big Step Senior Programs and Partnerships Coordinator. And my primary role is to work with a network of community-based partners, to, um, which is known as the Community Workforce Partnership, CWP, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that as the show goes on, um, to help to get more candidates from the community into the doors of WRTP Big Step so they can assess these wonderful programs that get them into family supporting careers. Just to give you a little background and a brief history of WRTP Big Step, uh, WRTP Big Step is actually two organizations in one. You have WRTP, which stands for the Wisconsin Regional Training Partnership. They were formed in 1992 to improve the employability and sustainability in the industrial sector uh, in the greater Milwaukee area. WRTP works with, uh, directly with employers to develop training programs that meet the specific and timely needs of the manufacturing sector. And then you have the Big Step program. Big Step was formed in 1976 by trade uh, representatives in response to low rates of minority and women's participation in the building trades, in the construction industry. Um, they work also directly with employers and training coordinators to ensure that individuals are well prepared uh, to enter a career in the construction industry with a focus on apprenticeships and apprenticeship readiness. Uh, together, they actually merged their operations in 2001, and in 2005, they launched the Center of Excellence, which is located at 3841 West Wisconsin Avenue. It's primarily is a clearinghouse that is uh, designed to help for recruiting, assessing, preparing, and placing candidates for skilled trades in industries, that's construction and manufacturing. So with that, we're going to lead in and talk to our wonderful guests this morning to find out a little bit more about what does it mean to be a, a nonprofit workforce intermediary and exactly how are they helping our community residents get into family supporting careers in the construction industry, manufacturing, and emerging sectors. So Mark, my first question for you would be, is if you could tell us about what is a little bit about what is the mission of WRTP Big Step and what does it mean to be referred to as a workforce intermediary? 
Well, thanks, John. It's great to be here. I think the the first point is that we have our little our little moniker, which is that we're industry led, worker center, community focused. Which means, as an intermediary, our job is to bridge the relationship between industry, the community at large, and people who are both in and out of the workforce. And so, to those ends, uh, both organizations historically have had industry leadership that was concerned with issues related to their competitiveness in the marketplace, but also how to build the future workforce that they might need. And that's done in tandem with, of course, the current workforce, which is dealing with how to upgrade and deal with technology. So as an intermediary, the genius of this model is that as workforce investments are made, whether they're public or private, they really need to be aligned toward um, a competitive marketplace, and they also need to be sensitive to the work, you know, the workforce that we have and the communities that we have to live in. So as the organization has changed over the years, we've had to adapt. And so that's one of the neat things about being in, an intermediary is that we're flexible, adaptable, and responsive to what the marketplace is and what it is that industry needs. And, and ultimately, to be able to articulate to the community what are the occupations and the jobs that are available and what are the skills, education, and experience that is needed to access those jobs. That's really what people in the community are looking for. How do I get to that family sustaining job? And that's what WRTP is always focused on. How to get people not just jobs, but to family sustaining jobs and, and ultimately a career where you can build a whole lifestyle. Wow, wow, that's excellent. So. Um, Recently, we've heard that uh, WRTP Big Step has a new construction clearinghouse model. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what that, what that uh, consists of? So in, in the changing world that we're in, um, increasingly WRTP and Big Step has had to serve as a single point of contact so that people know where they can go to get access to the careers that they're looking for. So in partnership with Employ Milwaukee and some of other community partners, we've developed a concept that we're calling the construction sector clearinghouse, where there are resources, where there's funding, training, uh, access to industry so that community people, uh, people in the community who are looking for that opportunity, they know where to go so that there's no question about where they need to, to find that career, find that opportunity. Wow, that's fabulous. So how exactly does um, the community workforce partnership play a role in all of this? And, and, and actually, can you tell our viewers a little bit of what is the Community Workforce Partnership, or CWP, as we like to refer to it? Well, I like to say, when we think about the Wisconsin Regional Training Partnership, I like to talk about the P, which is partnership. So we have industry partnerships, public partnerships, but then there's the community partnerships. So respecting um, the community-based organizations that are doing work in this community, other organizations that provide social human services. We know this is all a tapestry that has to be woven together in order to ensure that we're able to best and, and most effectively link people to careers. So the CWP is a group of about 14 organizations in Milwaukee who are doing great work on the ground. They do a variety of workforce preparation, legal services, child support enforcement, adult basic literacy, all kinds of services in the community that when linked to the services that WRTP s provides, we're able to really move someone in an effective way toward their ultimate career uh, goals. Wow, thank you. All right, well, Tracy, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, as the Director of Construction Initiatives, uh, the work that you do with the contractors and the public and private partners to develop the programs and to meet the workforce needs and just tell us a little bit about that, maybe some of the projects that, that sure, you've been a part sure, of. Sure, absolutely. Mark hit it on the head, it's partnership. So we have a really unique role in everything we do. It's partnership, everything is developed from our industry partners. So on the trade side, the Milwaukee Building Trade Council really leads what we do. We find out what they need, what the crafts are looking for, we're able to develop internally what they're asking for. And when there's projects that have workforce requirements that are put on them, we're pulled in from the beginning. So for example, uh, Northwestern Mutual, that was huge for us. Um, on the side with uh, the owner, the developer, the contractor, Gilbane, uh, we were able to develop a different classification with the Glaciers Union in talks prior to the project even starting, knowing there were workforce requirements that were going to happen, 
The Glaziers wanted to make sure, as did the building trades, Gilbane, the developer, that community residents went to work. So we were able to assess what those needs were, develop a specialized training, put, to people, put people to work at uh, the Dewey Benson plant, mm -hmm. and then connect them uh, to work while they were looking to get into apprenticeship and figure out, is construction a good fit for them? Is this what they want to do? So it was a win-win for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we've done recently, Bucks Arena is going up, right? Yes. So you hear there's, yes. there's an arena, there's basketball, there's construction, there's all this exciting stuff in Milwaukee. Well, where are the people? And so the question from the trades, they're coming to us and saying, where can we get good quality candidates that are retainable and marketable? Help us. And because of the partnership we have with them, we are their first source. Mm -hmm. um, and we're able to have those conversations. What are you looking for? What are the needs? What do they need to have to be successful on the job and in a construction career? So what we did, uh, Waltech um, reached out to us, the Carpenters Union reached out and said, can you help us? We are short people. We want to meet workforce requirements. We want to get people in the community to work. What can we do? And out of those conversations, we developed a specialized training tied to the Bucks Arena, uh, tied to the subcontractor on the project. Carpenters led it, two-week training, uh, 12 new community residents that obtained apprenticeship, uh, $16.10 an hour, I believe, and they're all new apprentices. So our role really puts us in a unique position to find out what the needs are along the way, uh, the trust of the industry partners we have, and the development of, of all of it. That's really amazing, and, I, and it's very inspiring to know that it all started with, with, the, with the contractors, with the project, and kind of worked out to the community. So could really, you guys took a lot of time to assess what the real needs are. Could you tell us a little bit about what the Big Step Apprenticeship Readiness Program is, and, and how does that help you know, people who are trying to connect to these careers in construction? Sure, absolutely. So I, I want to say that we are the uh, first state registered uh, apprenticeship readiness program. So our program is uh, recognized and, and registered with the state of Wisconsin. So our apprenticeship readiness program is twofold. There is academic preparation. So when people are coming through us, our staff does a great job assessing what their needs are. Um, is construction a good fit? Uh, what, what craft does that look like for you? Where do you want to go? And we're able to do individualized tutoring to help people pass the necessary tests, which is critical. That's the, the stepping stone to get into the apprenticeship program. And on the other side of it, we develop hands-on training classes for those that while they're waiting on a trade list or um, figuring out what they want to do, we can put them into a training class that gives them some hands-on components to make them more ready uh, for their career in construction. So uh, what if somebody comes in and, and you know, they need a little support to get ready? Do you uh, have a resource that could help them if they need some supportive services or something Oh, absolutely. Like that? With our, our new construction clearinghouse model, we have our own in-house career coach and case manager. We're able to find funding sources, dollars uh, to help somebody with those challenges and barriers. And separate from that, we have our wonderful partnership with our CWP group. So if we do need to get extra services that we're not able to do internally, we reach out to our valued partners for that. That's amazing. Um, so I have a couple questions that I just thought up knowing we were going to come to the show. And so well, I, was I hope I have answers for you. I hope you do too. So I was wondering, um, does a person have to have previous experience in the construction industry to, to go to work, to, to get an apprenticeship? Absolutely not. Now, I will say this, though, because of the needs in the construction industry across not, not just vertical, but road building, uh, construction is booming. Contractors and the trades are looking for people with skills, but they are looking for that entry level workforce as well. So people come to us from, I never was in construction before, what is it, but I think I want to do it, from I used to work years ago, life got in the way, now I'm getting back in. So. That's a long answer to your question, but absolutely not. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, what are the, the minimal requirements for someone to, to get involved? So I'm gonna say the basic requirements for, for some of the building trades and some of the crafts, 
you know, a driver's license is important. You have to be able to get to the job. Um, not all the work will stay in the city of Milwaukee. In construction, you will move around. That's important. Um, the other piece is having a GED or HSED. Now, having said that, if you don't have it, it does not deter you from getting in. We have resources that will help you obtain those. Okay. Um, there's different classifications you can get hired in while you're working on those items. And we don't want people to be turned away. We want to offer them what they need so they can get back in and fill in that pipeline for the trades. That's fabulous. Well, I'm going to move forward to Randy, and maybe we'll come back in a moment. And I know we have more time in the show. And Randy, um, can you tell us a little bit, as the director of uh, manufacturing initiatives, um, your work in the ind with your industrial partners um, and public, pub public and private partners um, to develop the programs? You know, just tell us a little about the work that you're doing on the manufacturing side to help get people connected. Well, contrary to popular belief, manufacturing still does exist, and although it may be a little different than uh, many years ago, um, uh, advanced manufacturing needs people that have qualifications to do the kinds of work that new technology brings. So um, if you're just coming out of school, what does that mean? You know, our employers are saying we can't find qualified workers and trying to figure out what those qualifications are is very different, but um, our job is to really help our manufacturers keep and grow jobs and to try to prepare and develop you know, workers that want to be in the industry and workers that are already in some level of the industry to advance. So I would say that would be um, our number one goal is to help the industry stay and grow. And by understanding where the jobs are and what they pay and what the skill requirements are and the different types of employers and job classifications, we can build our programs around those needs. So by identifying the needs first um, and then working with our partners to fill those needs, whether it be you know direct employment because they just need to know where to go and how to sign up, or whether it's pre-employment training or some other types of uh, uh, pipeline type development programs. We customize it for the employers that are interested in committing to hiring our graduates and committing to work with us, so. That's fabulous. Um, are there any maybe employers or manufacturers who we've been familiar with who you can tell us who you've done some work with over the years? Just a couple maybe. Um, sure, we do um, a lot of work with, uh, you know, Harley Davidson. We have uh, a number of programs with them. I was just at Vilter Manufacturing, who is very interested in our new apprenticeship program. We've got, you know, just a number of different employers that have needs that we serve, you know, when we can. Wonderful. Well, you mentioned briefly a little bit about your apprenticeship program, which I believe is referred to as the Industrial Manufacturing Technician Apprenticeship Program. So uh, could you maybe tell us maybe in, you know, 40 seconds or less as we go to break um, what, that's, what that's about? Just give us a little and maybe we'll come back and talk about that more. Sure. Um, you know, it's one of the first in the country apprenticeship programs for production workers. So it's a shorter uh, than the traditional high skilled, but it's very, very good and it's happening all around the country and it was created right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Fabulous, well that sounds very exciting. We'd like to maybe hear a little bit more of that when we come back from break. So I just want to remind everyone that WRTP Big Step is located at 3841 West Wisconsin Avenue. That's 30th and 38th in Wisconsin. So it is centrally located in the central city, near Southside, accessible by a bus line. Um, you can just walk in the doors Monday through Thursday, nine to five, Fridays, eight to two. Um, and they'll be there and ready to serve you if you have interest in what you've heard. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more with our guests and hear more about the wonderful things they're doing to help get people connected to careers uh, in the industry. Learning is about more than just numbers and letters. Social and Emotional Learning, or SEL, teaches kids how to handle emotions, set goals, and make good decisions. Social awareness includes the ability to understand others from diverse backgrounds and cultures. Being able to respectfully acknowledge differences helps kids manage how they relate to others. Try this. Have children make a list of all the ways they are different from others. Then make a list of all the ways they are the same. Ask kids how recognizing our differences and similarities can make it easier to work together. 
parents, caregivers, and teachers can ensure that social and emotional learning is part of a child's overall health and well-being. To find out more, visit First Book at firstbook.org SEL. First Book is a nonprofit organization providing all children with equal access to the books and resources they need to succeed. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, we're on What's Going On, we're talking with uh, Mark Kessnich, President and CEO of WRTP Big Step, Ms. Tracy Griffith, the Director of Construction Initiatives of WRTP Big Step, and Ms. Randy Berth, the Director of Manufacturing Initiatives for WRTP Big Step. And I'm John Anderson, their Senior Programs and Partnerships Coordinator, and I have the pleasure of doing a lot of our community outreach and running some special programs. When we left, we left off, we were talking to Ms. Randy Berth, who was going to tell us a little bit more about what the uh, IMT, or as it's referred to, the Industrial Manufacturing Technician Apprenticeship Program is all about. Randy, go ahead, take it away. Well, thank you. And uh, you know, I do want to add for people that maybe aren't aware that Wisconsin is one of the first states that had a registered apprenticeship program many, many years ago. And with the um, hundreds and thousands actually of apprenticeships, it usually takes a rookie and turns them into a skilled trades person, mm -hmm. except for manufacturing. In manufacturing, you typically have to work for a few years before you may be accepted into a higher skilled trade apprenticeship. Well, our employers and unions got together and said, we need something more entry level. We need something sooner to prepare people for our industries so they can work with this new high tech equipment and mm -hmm. things like that. So they developed this, you know, 18 to 24 month apprenticeship program, you know, geared towards the uh, workers that work in the production area you know, possibly in the, in the machinist area or in the welding area or in the assembly area, many different areas of a traditional manufacturing environment that gives the basics of safety and quality and understanding production and, you know, some maintenance awareness. And this has become a really hot, hot uh, training program that it's uh, not only being done here in, in the Wisconsin area, but all across the country. And, you know, many of our employees that started are having their second class and their third class mm -hmm. so you know the greatest gift of knowing if something's good or not is if they repeat and do it again so um, mostly our employers offer to their current workers first to really upgrade the skills so that they have for some cross training and understanding how to work in different departments and in different roles but it's really more for the new workers coming in so whether they're in a youth apprenticeship program or whether they're just starting off you know, off the street, never worked in manufacturing before. It really helps to transition them in a little more structured um, and even way to be more productive sooner because they're smarter about what they do. That's excellent. That's actually a great lead in. Uh, one of my questions I was going to ask you, and I think you kind of answered it for us, was does a person have to have previous experience to work in manufacturing? And also, is manufacturing something more so just for men? Well, the first question is, no, you don't need experience, but if you have skills and credentials and experience, you're highly sought after quicker. Um, but it's not necessary. We know which employers you need what for. You know, that's kind of one of the benefits of, you know, the manufacturing side or, you know, as Tracy mentioned, the clearinghouse side of, we know the best opportunities that are available at that moment for the people who walk in the door. Um, so we'll know which employers will take rookies and which ones really just need skilled workers and kind of separate that out. And of course, it is not just your father's manufacturing anymore. Um, we have plenty of women and minorities and uh, very diverse populations of people that enter manufacturing now, much different than it was in years past and not as much as it will be in the future. Excellent, excellent. Well, Tracy, I'm going to come to you. Um, also, kind of similar question. Uh, do you feel that does a person's background or gender, um, does that exclude them from, you know, from various uh, opportunities in the construction and skilled trades? So I'm going to answer that two ways just to keep you on your toes. <laughs> It's never too late to be who you want to be. So within our organization, we have people who come back to us with so many different backgrounds, um, baggage, challenges, and, and just history. And so we do a great job screening. I will say that uh, there are some trades where it can limit you if you are, if you have a certain felony. 
but there's opportunities abundant in the trades right now. So I would say to the community who is listening, if you are looking for careers in construction and opportunity to do something that you weren't able to do before, come in by us, talk to us, um, see us. And for the woman out there, if we could make construction, you know, is considered, you know, a non-traditional choice for women, I would love to be around when we see it change to, it's just, it's an opportunity, it's yeah. a choice, it's not non-traditional. So I do wanna point out that in the, the class we just held with Waltech, of the 12 that graduated, we had three females that are now brand new apprentices. And I could go on and on with the different training that we do. It's not as high of a number as I'd like to see. I wanna know where the females are in, in Milwaukee. Um, and I think that we just have to get the word out that there are support systems in place and that women absolutely 150% can do construction work. So you heard it here, ladies. You heard on it what's from going me. on. You heard it from Tracy <laughs> Griffith. We are looking for ladies because construction industry, they need you, community, that we need you. So I have a kind of a group question for everyone. I'm gonna open it up. We can start with, with Mark, but it's really a question for everyone. So we, whoever wants to go first or take turns, you know, please feel free to answer freely. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to know, how do you feel about um, the re-entry population uh, and how they fare when entering these two very dynamic career fields. Because we know a lot of people in the community, they have a concern. We have a large re-entry population, a lot of people coming back to the community. And so I just wanted to get your thoughts on, on that. So Mark, if you want to maybe lead us off and, 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 and give us your thoughts on how, how uh, this work interplays with that particular segment of the community. Well, I think the lead in is that across the country, there's a movement toward um, middle skills or technical trade skills. There's a recognition that college is not the option for everyone. I mean, that's yeah. something that's been talked about. And Milwaukee has this really rich tradition of being very much tied to technical and trade um, industries. And as, um, as this national dialogue is going on, at the same time, we're talking about where, where is the future workforce? Yeah. How are we gonna deal with these very real issues around incarceration and people being involved with the criminal justice system in a way that's impacting their lives very negatively? Mm -hmm. The good news is, as an organization for us is that because our focus is really in trade and technical skills and occupations, these, these areas are very forgiving in many ways to someone who has a criminal background. And in fact, other than some really specific felonies or some very specific um, you know, types of uh, background, there's great opportunity. I think Tracy said it and Randy is making an allusion to it, is that um, the industries that we work with are on the rise. There's a desire for people who, who want to work and want to be productive and competitive. And honestly, when you talk to the industry themselves, uh, they're looking not at what someone's background is, or what their uh, you know their experience has been, they're they're really looking at the person and are you really ready to be mm -hmm. a competitive part, a productive part of my workforce? That's the first and foremost part that the industry is looking at as a whole. So I think we've been really able to facilitate that dialogue as an organization, so we understand the issues that are impacting um, the reentry population or folks who are dealing with criminal justice issues but we're also educating our industry to say this is a great opportunity for us and we need to understand that um, that the background issues that might appear uh, to be a problem really aren't. Wonderful. And I, I want to add to that because the contractors and our trade partners that we work with, what I have heard from almost everyone and um, I think almost everyone, they are looking for somebody who has a good attitude and willing to learn. They have a need to, to continue to grow their industry. And so they're looking at things a little bit differently than they have in the past. And I have had contractors say to me, give me somebody who has no skills, as long as they can work on the job, whatever their background is, who wants to learn and has a good attitude. We will train them, we will make them part of our company. And, and so Mark said it, there's, there's a changing, there's a shift. Wow. Randy, any, anything you'd like to add to that conversation? No, I think that we actually serve a high population of people that are uh, re-entry people, and most of that is 
um, hidden in the way that we don't prom we don't promote a person because of you know we feel sorry for them or they had a rough mm -hmm. past. We promote them because they're the most qualified person, regardless of you know maybe what they've been in before. And I think before you asked about minimum qualifications, I would say drug free would be the number one minimum qualification that we need to help people understand it's not too late to be drug free, so you can start at any time. But we work our people in our industries work around dangerous equipment and in situations where that's really a mm -hmm. primary barrier uh, unless they can change that around. So it's, you know, I would say it's starting for that. And I just want to make sure everybody understands because we didn't really say it. We did mention that, you know, we're talking about technical careers that you maybe don't need a four year degree for, but a lot of people don't understand that apprenticeship is paid training. Uh, you are actually paid to learn while you're working. And so um, I want to make sure people understand a registered apprenticeship program is very structured. The wages are advanced and you can, uh, you know what that's going to be and their progressive wage increases over the lifetime of their training but it is a you know a job a career and it's not like going to college where you have to go to school and not have a job for four years it's you're working and earning the entire time you're in the apprenticeship program and I think that's that's very important because I know a lot of individuals who aspire to get into careers um, you know, at the same time, life is happening, things are going on, they have obligations and, and financial uh, needs to meet. And so you sharing with us and just kind of bringing out that an apprenticeship is paid or on the job training, I thought was very, very helpful. Thank you for touching on that. Jim, Mark? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. We're not a, an organization that promotes herself as, as a, a re-entry organization. We don't promote ourselves as someone who does a lot of work with the criminal justice system. But the fact of the matter is we receive quite, you know, we receive referrals from federal probation and parole, the state of Wisconsin Department of Corrections. We work with the House of Corrections. We work with a number of different uh, police uh, departments, youth programs, all trying to get at some of the core issues that are affecting, the, you know, the immediate community. And so um, we would guess somewhere between 70 and 75% of the folks who come in our doors have had some encounter at some point with one of those systems. And so while we don't promote it, we're probably the best kept reentry program <laughs> in Milwaukee. Um, and I think when wow. we look at some of our success stories, while we don't lead with that part, mm -hmm. woven into so many of those success stories are individuals who have made a mistake, they've, they've paid their dues, and they've made the decision to take care of the responsibilities and move forward with themselves and with their families. And so um, while it's not something we promote, it's something I think that we're really proud of and the people who, who know the, the real story um, appreciate the real story. Well, that's excellent. I'm, I, I'm glad we've had this opportunity to come together today because I'm just, it's so inspiring to know that so many positive things are happening for our community members. You kind of made reference to youth. Can you maybe tell us just a little bit about uh, what the work WRTP Big Step is doing on the youth side? Well, we have, we have two approaches. One is to, to work with the high schools and even working down into the middle schools. It's becoming a bigger part of the, the work that we do, uh, trying to attract and get young people attracted to trades to the industries that we work in requires increasing exposure, um, summer academies, hands-on workshops, programming um, that's gonna be helpful. Because you gotta remember, kids in today's world are not getting the exposure to shop classes and the kind of sure. um, trade and middle skills that we work on. They're, they're very comfortable with handheld devices and computers, mm -hmm. but not as much with holding tools and understanding spatial relationships. Um, but on the other side, we are dealing with um, young people who have graduated from high school or not graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And so building partnerships with, um, with out-of-school youth programs and trying to find ways to engage in the community around those 18 to 24 year olds who haven't made a career choice and they're not sure what the next direction in is another piece of the organization that again, while we're very industry driven and sector focused, it's a platform for us to really reach into the community and try to um, provide some direction and guidance and programming to young people who otherwise don't have access to it. That's excellent. Are there any uh, schools that we might be familiar with that you guys have been working with, maybe currently or, or in the recent, recent past? Well, we certainly you know, recognize MPS and, and MATC are core partners of ours, uh, but in particular, Bradley Tech has been a flagship relationship that we've had. 
Uh, but we've also done some work with some suburban school districts as well. Brown Deer and Oak Creek come to mind. We've had some good industry leadership around that. The goal for us, I think, in the coming years is to broaden the partnership with Milwaukee Public Schools, to get into more high schools and be active, and really to get down into that middle school level so that younger kids are learning about the exciting opportunities and really um, changing the way people perceive the industries that we work in. There's so many opportunities uh, to grow a career and to, to, to spend a lifetime. Wow, it really sounds like you guys are casting a wide net there. Could I add Please. to that? So um, we have a great partnership with the Milwaukee Construction Building Trade Council. We have a formalized mentoring program within the MPS schools. And so we have run the, the Construction Career Weeks, uh, which we've done now for three years. But we've got to give a shout out to the trades that come in and really are trying to engage these kids. Again, Mark said it. I mean. You, you give them a phone and they're in heaven, but now you're, you're trying to say, get them to think about things a different way, get, you know, get them engaged. And just yesterday, um, a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club and the Milwaukee Building Construction Trade Council, we were out at one of the camps doing hands-on. Uh, so there were about 30, 30 uh, students from ninth to 12th grade that did hands-on with uh, some of our trade partners. And it was very successful and the feedback was fantastic. You have to get them uh, before they're done with school so that they have those options because traditional college isn't for everyone. Yeah, I really do believe that the youth uh, being our, our future, that it's, that it's valuable we invest in them. And, and a lot of people don't understand that there's so much opportunities in what we might refer to as the infrastructure. Um, you know, as I usually say to people, unless we're going to go back to living in caves, we're always going to need carpenters and electricians and plumbers, and we need machinists and, and individuals who help make our products. And so it's such a vital part of, of, our, of our society. Um, Mark, can you tell us just a little bit, I know that as um, I've heard that WRTP Big Step as a workforce intermediary has been doing a lot of work on the local scene, but is there anything that kind of extends beyond um, just the local area? Is there any way that WRTP is reaching outside of the Milwaukee and their central city? Well, there's two parts to that answer. So one is, you know, obviously we're doing work throughout the state of Wisconsin. In the last three years, we've opened an office in Madison, Wisconsin, um, and that's been a tremendous relationship and partnership um, with the contractors and trades, but also with the city of Madison, um, Dane County, United Way. We've had great support, um, both with youth programs and, and adults. And we're also doing things uh, throughout the Midwest that I'd love to talk about. Well, I tell you what, we need to take a break, but when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more and hear about what are some of the things WRTP Big Steps involved in, in a broader uh, sense in the Midwestern region. So come right back. Thank you. So today we're... I think this page is set. If you agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah, agree. there's probably a couple yeah, changes. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, okay. The most important is different. Well, great. Then let's move on. Page five. Welcome back. This is What's Going On, uh, brought to you by Matta Community Media. Today's show's producer is Ms. Martha Love. Our guests today are uh, the leadership of WRTP Big Step, which is a local nonprofit workforce intermediary that's doing great things in our community, helping individuals to get into careers in construction, manufacturing, and emerging sectors. When we left off, we were speaking to Mr. Mark Keshnick, the president and CEO, who was just telling us a little bit more about some of the work that they're doing in the broader area and in the Midwest. Uh, he's being joined by Tracy Griffith, the director of construction Initi initiatives, pardon me, and Ms. Randy Burf, the director of manufacturing initiatives. Mark, can you please um, go ahead and, and just uh, 
finish your thoughts and tell us, you were really telling us about some of the broader work that your organization is doing? Yeah, so we, we were able to open offices in Madison, Wisconsin uh, in 2014. And so that's taken off in terms of our ability to have partnership uh, in that community and help do some of the things that WRTV Big Steps done here in Milwaukee. Uh, but the other part of it is we are the Wisconsin Regional Training Partnership. And so we've been helping manufacturers throughout the state and building trades and contractors throughout the state in the way that we do it. And it's always, it's a partnership philosophy. Mm -hmm. the, um, the recognition of the success of the model um, has translated itself into um, really doing work throughout the Midwest and trying to replicate some of the, the, the projects that we've done here, like the Industrial Manufacturing Technician Apprenticeship Program, which has now been adopted and being implemented in, in eight states across the Midwest. Wow. Um, being able to work with other communities uh, throughout the Midwest that are facing some of the other challenges that we talked about earlier. How do you bridge um, employment needs with urban uh, re you know, re-entry issues? How do you engage contractors and trades to open up opportunities and training that works? So uh, the, the fun part about the organization is that it's dynamic and responsive to the industry, but it's also proving that this is a very replicable model for other parts of the country. So it's very exciting to think that the work that we're doing here mm. um, is, is going to is going to blossom in other places as well. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Well, this has so been so very enlightening information that you've all shared with us today. Uh, I think what I'd like to do now is to find if we have any final thoughts that you'd all like to lead off of this. And I'm kind of just kind of going to go in order uh, with Randy, who is our Director of Manufacturing Initiatives. Is there anything that we left out or you want to share, anything uh, exciting going on? or just want to kind of help the community members to really understand, you know, that there is an opportunity that they can access right now today. Well, you know, I think that is a one thing I like to mention is everything that we do is in real time. You know, in manufacturing, there's a term just in time. We need to do everything just in time. And I think we do too. So our programs aren't run in hoping that there'll be a job at the end for some employer. What we're doing when we run our programs is when an employer wants us, when they're committed to working with us, we hold recruitment events or we'll work mm. with, you know, the implementation of a new program. So it's not like, a, you know, people sometimes confuse us with one of our partners like MATC or MPS. We're not a school exactly that runs courses every day for our industry. It's we really are only doing things for our industry when they want it and how they need it. And whether it's exposure courses or getting ready to be uh, ready for the industry or more advanced training within or for the industry, everything we do is real time and I think that's important. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Uh, Trace. Any final thoughts, any things you, we haven't touched on? Or I mean, just Randy, wanna... Randy, that's just so important of who we are and what we do. We don't train to train. And we um, are a stepping stone for the apprenticeship programs um, in the building trades. So for those out there that are really looking to make a change in their life, they're willing to commit, they have questions, uh, they're willing to work, give us a call, stop in. the building trades and all of the different crafts and contractors, we're meeting with them regularly, finding out what they need, um, where the holes are in the industry, and there's a lot of them. And so our partners are counting on us to, to help give them that pipeline, and the opportunities are incredible. So for those that want a family sustaining wage, a career, um, can commit to going to school at some point because you're working full time going to school when you get an apprenticeship, um, now is the time to make that change. It, it's now is the time. Don't wait. All right, you heard it here. Now's the time. Don't wait, Mr. Kessner. Any final thoughts, sir, for us? Well, I agree with my colleagues. There, we have tremendous opportunity. This is a great access point. And if there's one thing that I always lament, it's that more people don't take advantage of the opportunities that are, you know, happening through our organization. It really is something that we like to like to change, we'd like to see more of. But I think the final point, and <clears throat> capstoning both what Randy and Tracy said, you know, the difference between a job and a paycheck and a career is someone who's on a career track is someone who's going down to Northwestern Mutual and pointing out, we put those glass panels together. And all of those glass panels were put together by city Milwaukee residents earning a living. So it's more than just a job. 
it's about being able to say, I assemble parts for Harley Davidson. And so yes, I earn my paycheck, but this is my career. This is what I do. This is what I'm all about. Or the Bucks Arena, to know that you were a part of that. You know, we had a great success story that we just published about a young man who was working on that. So the difference between getting a job and having a career is having that pride in what you're doing and knowing that you're a part of something. And that's what we want to bring people into. All right. So let me see if I, if I, if I understand this correctly. WRTP Big Step is a workforce intermediary, and what that means is they start with industry, labor, the employers, the contractors, the trade unions, the training coordinators, to find out what are the needs in real time, where are the jobs, where are the career opportunities. Then they work backwards to connect with community residents and where training is necessary, they tie them into training or connect them directly with those employers. Would that be somewhat accurate? Yes. I, I think you're more than somewhat <laughs> oh, accurate. Oh, Whew, John, I kinda nice know job. The, I know the answers <laughs> to these questions. But also, um, would you also say then, uh, recanting on what um, Randy made reference to, is that um, you all do not believe in the train and pray method. I know all you out there have heard of that. That's where someone trains you and they pray you get a job, and we know that that does not work. So uh, you'll say that your model is really based upon responding to industry's need versus just creating something uh, based on what someone else thinks is a good idea, but you really start by tapping the pulse of industry and responding so that those individuals can be really connected in a substantive way into a family supporting career. Again, you'd agree with that? That's exactly right. I'd say, I'd say there's no individual who walks into our doors that's hoping to go into a training program for the sake of a training program. The expectation is that there's a road to something and that road to something is a great job, which is a great career, which is a better lifestyle and taking care of what we really want to take care of. All right, so you have manufacturing opportunities, and I think when you're talking, usually it's CNC manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, uh, machine operators, press operators, electrical assemblers, mechanical assemblers, welders, industrial electricians, industrial maintenance machine mechanics, construction, we're talking about a wide range. There's over 18 predominant different trades that I can just think of today, but really helping someone get into an apprenticeship. And once again, that's paid training. That's earn mm -hmm. while you learn, uh, getting paid on the job, have a lifelong skill, a trade craft that follows you wherever you go, so you're always employable. Um, you have in-school and out-of-school youth programs, so individuals 16 to 24, if they've maybe dropped out of school, they need to get some direction and get connected to a career, you've got things for them, you, you're going into the schools, you're tapping our youth right now, re-engaging them to what it means to have a career in, in the industrial side. Um, so I guess the last thing left for us to do is to tell people how they can access us and where we're located and how they can get with us. And so for you out there, so you know, you can come to our offices, which are located at 3841 West Wisconsin Avenue. Our hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Fridays from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., and you can come in and see us in person. Although, for general questions, you can call our main phone number, which is area code 414-342-9787. At the front desk staff there, they will direct you on what your next steps should be, um, because we really do care about uh, people, and this means that during normal business hours, you can connect with a real live person. Uh, if you have specific interest in the Big Step Apprenticeship Readiness Program, uh, you can call uh, uh, the main number or you can call 937-3600. That's area code 414-937-3600. That's our Big Step line. Um, if you have specific interest in manufacturing, again, you can always call our main number, which is area code 414-342-9787. Or you can just email us your resume to manufacturing at wrtp.org. And someone from our manufacturing team will contact and follow up with you. And lastly, you can also visit our website, which is located at, or I should say listed as, www.wrtp.org 
dot org for more information and questions you can even message us there if you have specific questions and someone will get back to you and finally in keeping with the times you can follow us on, on facebook and like us on twitter so i just want to thank you all for watching once again uh, we are very grateful to Miss Martha Love, who's the producer of What's Going On. This show has been brought to you by Mata Community Media. And our lovely guests today have been the senior leadership of WRTP Big Step, Mr. Mark Keshnish, their president and CEO, Tracy Griffith, their head of uh, director of construction initiatives, and Miss Randy Burf, the director, director of manufacturing initiatives, pardon me. And lastly, myself, your host for today, I'm John Anderson, the Senior Programs and Partnerships Coordinator, hoping to reach out and see you all very soon as we are just welcoming you all to uh, be engaged. We have so much work and opportunities now here locally and they extend out. So if you have any interest, give us a call, visit our website, come and see us. We're waiting for you. Thank you for watching. An MCM production.